Let's start with 7 o'clock. It's the uh, 25th day of March 2019. This is Jamaica Select Board. And we'll start with the first order of business, which is to call for any late additions to the agenda. Uh, anybody besides me? I have a couple of quick ones. Nope. I have two real quick ones. Um, we have uh, Jenny Stone, where you are, there, is going to speak just for about five minutes on senior solutions. She wasn't able to make it to the uh, town meeting, so I thought we'd, we'd have her um, do that tonight. We'll do that early because we're going to have some other things that we'll be discussing. And, um, and I got a request from the Jamaica Village School that um, I'll read at the end. Um, second on the list of fun things to do is the Select Board Meeting Minutes for March the 11th. Um, do we have any additions, deletions, corrections? I have only one. If you look on the third page, uh, first, first paragraph, it says the total is regarding the new um, bid from Sir Uh The total will be 11700 for the two sections, 11718 I apologize for being so picky. 11,700, what, and 18? 18. 18. Oh, why didn't you see that? Yeah. I was you sure that's not? No, I'm looking at this right here. Oh, and his paper? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, we, I probably just, when I was saying it, I probably just mentally rattled it off. So, <laughs> you might as well keep the records yep. straight. Um, any other questions? Corrections, additions, deletions? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as revised. Is that a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, the minutes are accepted as amended. Thank you very much. Oh, shoot. That's the job of the person who shoots it, buddy. I know. <laughs> Tom's not here. It's your job. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now, the <laughs> minutes are accepted. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, we're going to sit there, and you're going to do Tom's job of keeping me straight. Number three, approve the time sheets for the town office versus highway and transfer station. And number four, sign the select board orders. We'll do that at the end of the session so that we don't keep you guys hanging around all day long. Um, now, the next is number five, but I'm going to put these kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to delay them just for a minute. I'm going to insert um, Janine in here, Janine in here, on the uh, senior solutions, if you would, please. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Jamaica for the contribution that they've been doing to Senior Solution. And I'm just here to sort of inform you of what they have been doing and they're continuing to do. Uh, they have made, in the last year, 43 calls. They've received 43 calls where they help people. People call them and they want information on Medicare, they want medication on Social Security, they want medication on housing fuel, and they give them all that kind of information. They've also helped 10 residents in Jamaica with uh, part, Medicare Part B and the Advantage Plan. They're very good with that. If you need any help, they're really there. Also, they have served, they have delivered 1,014 uh, Meals on Wheels, and they sponsor the monthly senior luncheon at the, at the church here. And uh, we usually have, I'm the coordinator there, we usually have between 18 we've had up to 30 people come to the senior luncheon, which is really nice, and you're all invited to come. Uh, they do help with transportation, but they haven't had any calls for that here. And what they do also, they do case management and advocacy. They've helped six elder residents in Jamaica, where they go into their homes and they help them with the things that they need, maybe getting help so that they can stay in their home. They've uh, given uh, 66 hours, over 66 hours. And um, so Jamaica has been giving $600 a year to the association. And what happens with the monies that they get from these small towns, they usually get a grant of the same amount. But there's something else that they're starting now. At the last meeting I went to, there's a man by the name of Jane, John Hager, and he's the commander of the American Legion Post 5 in Brattleboro. And what he is trying to do, and the Senior Solution is really working with them, as a matter of fact, they now have a veteran by the name of John Lear, who comes from the RSVP, it's a volunteer program, 
and they're trying to coordinate and they're, they're calling it VET for VET program. It's a program for the veterans and it's not a program, it's not charity or anything like that. What it is is they find that uh, there are a lot of senior uh, vets and maybe they're home, they don't have company and they feel that the most important thing that they could have is another vet talking to them. Like uh, this uh, Lear, uh, Al, uh, he said that when he goes once a week, he goes, he visits the veterans, he'll take them to lunch at the legions and he'll go shopping with them. Sometimes all they want to do really is talk to someone that can really, really understand where they're coming from. So Senior Solution is trying to get involved with that. I suggested, and I'm really going to push for it very much at Senior Solution, that what Senior Solution should do in our monthly luncheon, that we should dedicate November for solely for the veterans. And maybe invite as many veterans as we can and do a very nice luncheon and maybe we can, uh, you know, not have them pay for their lunch and I'm going to, as uh, the co-president of the Benefit Association, I'm going to ask this benefit to maybe sponsor this. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's about it, really. Uh, and I thank you for giving me the time. Well, we thank you for the uh, for the, all the work you do in the neighborhoods and around here because clearly there's a need. Well, I think so. I, I was very excited by it. Yeah. You know, I know that one year, or maybe about, it was about eight or nine years ago, the Senior Solution Luncheon happened to be right on Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we started calling a whole lot of veterans and we invited them. And we had quite a few veterans who came. And as a matter of fact, we had, you might remember his name. He lived near the um, um, Joe Granis in a little house. Um, oh, yeah. I, I do remember who he is. You might remember his name. He, was, he, he lived in the cabin and he, he passed away. He was a veteran. Peter. Hmm? He? Oh, no, no. Um, no. It's a very funny name and I can never remember. But in any case, he came and he had a wonderful story to tell because he was on a boat on D Day and he was very instrumental. And one of the boats sank and he told the story of, and he, my husband, remember reading about him in a book where he actually got the people on his boat to save. And then we had a different, I mean, your husband came and he spoke, you know, and we had uh, a, a few people, and so that's what I'm going to push for. And that's it, really, nothing else. But it's a good organization. It really, really is a wonderful senior solution. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you thank so you. much for your time. Good point. <laughs> Okay, number five, um, progress on the bids for the ceiling of the town hall. Okay. Here we go. Welcome to the... <laughs> I have the... Mass confusion. Yeah. I actually have made a copy for... I'm sorry, um, Tom's not here. We take one pass mm -hmm. on. These are the different uh, prices that I have gotten from the four people who have uh, given me some numbers about doing the building. Actually, I have contacted six mm -hmm. all together, so it's not a lack of getting involved uh, with people who do this. And I would like you to look at all four. Unfortunately, I got involved with the stapler and did too much. So if you want to just spread out the four in front of you, you it gives you a chance to really uh, look at the different prices. Um, <clears throat> starting from the top down, we have uh, a price from Mamani uh, for, let's see, $18,000. And all of the specs are there. Uh, then Ray Wilcox, who is BMW Painters, and uh, that one is for 15. The next down is Norm Holden, and his is 6,800. And the last one is Pikes Falls Painting, Jamaica, Vermont, uh, and that's uh, $1,330. So, as you can see, we have a very wide spread. 
And that's what has been so confusing. Uh, what uh, all of the specs are there, exactly what they want to do. The major issue that we're running into is the issue of, I can't find the right word. Andy, what's the name of that? The Noresco plaster. Is the Noresco, yes, is the Noresco. And I think I've talked about this a little bit. It is a powdery substance that develops on either, it, and I have not been able to figure out whether it is the old pastor, uh, plaster um, that was done for the ceiling, or it is a paint uh, powder that comes from them. But at any rate, it is up there on the ceiling of the town hall, and, it, and it's in patches and the patches are growing more numerous all the time. So that has been the major issue that we have had. And you can see by the amount of money from 18,000 to 1330, there's a wide range and it's very confusing. Um, I have tried to look it up in, um, on the web to see what this Noresco is all about. And basically, it is a powder. Whether it's coming from plaster or paint, I, it, that does not seem to be clear. However, because it is an old, eight, is it 1840 uh, building? I think that's the uh, age of that building. Um, it's creating a major problem for us. And uh, I, I'm presenting this because we need to do something. I have been in touch with the preservation group and they really know not a whole lot. They've actually had sent somebody to me for, for information about painting. So, <laughs> um, it, I, I'm not finding a whole lot, and of course we have Andy, who is our expert, um, that can kind of fill us in a little bit, if you could, about what you know about the Marisco. Well, just some of these bids are addressing getting it clean first, and unfortunately the highest bid, well, money-wise, unfortunately, seems to be the most, I mean, uh, thorough and sounds the best to me, but I certainly don't want my, I don't want to influence these bids on anything as, no, I, as I would, I don't know what the deadline is to look for, maybe I can find out some more about that, I haven't had time to even look online or anything. Like yeah, and that. I have, and, and basically uh, these two groups, uh, Ray Wilcox, right. Uh, knows a lot about it and he talked to me about it and what he has said basically is that we have to paint uh, put a primer and it is an oil compound I don't know if he goes and explains that here but that's what he told me was that three coats of compound prime and, and then one finished coat of paint uh, the, the uh, uh, Mamani, uh, they uh, are doing also something similar, but they're doing scraping the area. Right. And I'm not, I'm not clear whether he's just going to be scraping the pieces that are loose, or is he going to be scraping the whole ceiling? He's talking about doing some trim too. Did you, did you want him to do some of the trim? I guess uh, it's the only they probably would fix that. Yeah, I, I think that that's the one maybe out in the hallway where that's coming off of the wooden part. Well, when we did plaster years ago, we always oil primed it. And two of them, I believe, Raymond and Normandy, said that they were, Raymond doesn't say what kind of primer it was. 
I knew it would be expensive. I remember when I was away telling you, yeah, I exactly. wouldn't be surprised to hear over right. 20,000. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, and, I, and so with that in mind, I think the one that is $1,330 might be really. Do you know when the when it was done before, if any of these treatments were done for no, this Moresco? No, it, it was not. It was just painted. Yeah, and my, it was done in when they were uh, reconditioning right, the right, right, yeah. interior. My I fear think. would be that they take the time and effort to do the parts that are peeling and crumbling and chalky now, and then two or three years, the other part that wasn't done is peeling and chalky. And, and if this is gone for I mean, 10 years, I mean, almost as much, I mean, it's been 10 years since it was painted, I and mean, that's almost what you expect for paint. Yeah. Um, that you're spending $20,000 might, might need to do it again, and <laughs> yeah. it's a lot for a paint job. Um, actually, uh, the Ray Wilcox BMW, he actually is talking about that. He's saying that we feel there are other two problems, and he does not uh, guarantee because he said in two years we might have more peeling again where it is not peeling right now. Mm -hmm. the, the issue is, is that when the, the uh, building was reconditioned, right. the people who did paint, just literally painted over uh, the, the ceiling without being aware of what was going on. And now we're kind of uh, having to deal with that. So, uh, for me, the question is, do we just go ahead and do it, knowing that it's going to happen? Um, it's something that uh, our preservation people want us to do. And... Um, yes, so can I ask a question? Yes. Around this Moresco, I'm not clear. Is the Moresco something that they put up there, or is the Moresco the result of aging of something else? Number two. Okay. So the, with that about the Marisco, that's really residue from right. whatever was up there. Yeah. So that's got to come down. Yeah. Well, the first estimate addresses that, like hand washing it down after they spray. Which one is that? The bottom? Um, okay. And would that be for the whole thing or just the parts that are peeling? The parts that are peeling because you want to be able to right. wash underneath. Right. Um, but. I, I bet I can find out something from Benjamin Moore from the company because they, they may have no relevance whatsoever, but they have, I mean, helping us with a, a covering. But they had a ceiling paint that was called Best Moresco. Oh. You know, we, we use it all the time on cheap rock. It's just a latex paint. And I wonder, because they use that name, if it would be somebody in Benjamin Moore, Sherman Williams, that would yeah. know more about this Moresco business. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was online looking through Moresco, trying to figure it out, all of the different uh, um, antique, you know, uh, plaster and what happens, but, uh, Benjamin Moore kept coming up all the time as they're the ones who seem to know what to do with it. So, uh, do we, have, might do, we, do we have time until the next meeting? Uh, yeah. Well, give us time to look this over and give you time to check that out. And yeah. Call, yeah. Call the call next, next step. I think yeah. three three of the bids are good, but I don't. I, t I think there needs to be some oil put on that, any plastic. Yeah, and that's the one that BMW is talking about. And Romney, too. Is he talking about the, uh, oil? oil? He's talking eliminate with some chalk and calcium. He says he, he, when dry, prime panels with special alkali paint yeah. oil to promote adhesion for the current paint. Well, he wants to put it over that too in any future paint. Uh huh. Then who else mentioned alkali paint? That one, so. Uh, to, uh, BMW says we feel that there are two problems for the seat fluctuating temperature for the expansion. Also, the ceiling may have a mor moresco on it. It could start peeling anywhere, anytime, etc. Scrape where needed, wash, tape cracks, and apply three coats of compound prime. Is that what BMW is saying? Right. And one finish 
coat of paint. He, he seemed to, both of these two, the higher price ones, seem to really know. Um, let's see, how about Holden? Prep materials, patching, plaster, sandpaper. It does say primer, a primer. Yes. See what the other word is? -E. Sealer, a primer sealer. Oh, sealer, is that what that is? I'm guessing. Yeah, back to Raymond, BMW. Yeah. He's trying to, I think, avoid future problems by the scrape where it's needed, obviously, mm -hmm. wash it to get that powder off. And then, I mean, I'm ad, ad, ad living here. Yeah. Me, paraphrase, but tape cracks. That means he's going to put uh, tape, drywall tape, and apply three coats of compound. So every one of those panels, he's going to make look like finished sheetrock, and yeah. then prime it and put one coat of finished paint on. Yeah. So that would, if you get the compound to stick to the plastic, that's where he's coming from, mm -hmm. which is another good idea. Yeah. And he's been, they've been at it since the early '60s. Uh huh. I mean. And and his price, of course, is fifteen. Thousand uh, compared to eighteen. Two prices, maybe they're kind of have a little more experience. Well, if I had to guess, the <coughs> both, both of these companies have been around a long time. Yeah. And so is Norman. Yes. Uh, they're new fame uh, paint, uh, painters. I I did not get uh, a quote from and uh, another. A painter in Jamaica, I did not get a quote for the price. So that's, that's the story. Well, okay, so let's uh, make sure we have time to take these home over, make sure we've got an apple to apples. You're going to check on that. I know. I can talk to this, uh, a couple of contractors I know who are, one, one's a drywall outfit and they have a guy that plasters, mm -hmm. and another guy uh, who knows more about plaster than I do. Mm -hmm. like I've been working over at the church and yeah. that plaster over there has yeah. horse, it has hair. Uh -huh. I think that's different than what's happening, yeah. what was used here. Right. So, it's different plasters. It's are about the same time, I think. Isn't, right. isn't that, isn't the church around 1840? I was just reading when it was sold. Mm -hmm. It used to be the town hall. It yeah. was sold as a church, but yeah. I didn't see where it was built. Yeah, I, I, I could be really wrong, but I know it's the early 1800s. So. Lots to digest. Yes. I think it could be fixed if, if there's not moisture above it all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, someone that's going to take the time to set staging up and go at that for some big, for some, you know, it's an expense. Or maybe Norman Holden painting, he may be able to do it for that. I'm not sure I get it. Just asked a couple questions that I really didn't have time to. Yeah, and I, I since I, the last meeting, I didn't know you. Yeah. You found out a lot more. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I I tried to go in online and look at different things. I, <laughs> uh, all sorts of paint companies I've been involved with locally and, and nationwide, but they really do not address that. So I think it's kind of a, <clears throat> where there are historical issues or problems. So, so if, I guess if you don't mind doing that, no. and then I, uh, Just like I said, I know a couple now. of guys I would trust to ask a couple of questions without, okay. you know, they wouldn't expect to be compensated for it. Then that we get together the next session, which is the 8th of April, I think. Okay. And the only other thing would Another thought would be, except for that uh, detailed trim up there, is it could be replastered. 
but just uh, reflects the whole thing. That might be an extent. So yeah. more so the painting. Does anybody do that? Well, it's just that it would be hard in between all those panels. Yes, yeah, right. You'd lose that's some it. of the definition, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you get a point. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at when we were over there. I'm looking at that. That's a chore. Yes, it is a chore. Because the, the, the yeah. panels are probably no longer yeah. than this, sure, yes. and about this wide, and the whole ceiling is just covered. And it's uh, how many feet? I think we have that measurement. Uh, oh, no, that, that's the height of it. So 18.4 is the height from um, floor to ceiling. First of all, get it easier. And I think it, it's close to that's maybe 30 feet, 40 feet long. Mm -hmm. Would that be a guess? Yes. Yeah. So, and then all of those little panels are it's going to be the intensive. entire ceiling. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you will so, check on the hand. Okay, we all have these to take home and yeah, take try these. to do apples to apples. Yeah. And we'll try to make some sense out there. And try to work on kind of coming to a conclusion. Sure. <clears throat> and, and just in case a question comes up regarding our procurement policy, it's very difficult to just open sealed bids on service, these kinds of services, and pick one based on the quantity. Because it's very difficult, as you're finding out, to match all these things, apple to oranges. Some right. decisions need to be made on how to go forward. And, and so right. this fits in the service end of our procurement policy, which doesn't require us to do sealed bids um, and move forward like that. So we're, we're, all, we're operating OK with okay. our procurement policy. But, yeah. so, that's the only thing we've got going for us, <laughs> is we get to take a look and, and try to do an apples to apples comparison. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to print all the amounts yes. so each of you could look at them and yep. digest. Excellent. Um, thank, thank you very you. much. Do we have anything more while I've got you, how are you on the floor, about the uh, sills? Um, when students would attack that? Oh, no, I have not gotten any uh, word. I know it's going to be before. Uh, the beginning of uh, July. Okay. <coughs> so I don't think, I'm trying to think what do we have going on over there. I've got to look at the calendar, and uh, Sarah's got the calendar if there's anything going yeah. on that we should build into that. Yeah, I think, I don't think that should be, if my understanding, because it has to be braced and all of that, yeah. that you can still have uh, activities in there. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll get an idea of what's planned yeah. and give it to him, and then he can factor that in as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, oh, number six. We had a, uh, when we were doing the appointments last time, I had sent a letter to our 911 coordinator. Um, and it turns out that we never got an answer. Well, it turns out there was a reason for that, because I left a letter out in the address. So apparently there's another Erica Bowen floating around out there who got a letter from me. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know where that is. In any case, I talked to her on the phone. She is interested in continuing as a 911 coordinator. So we've been working on a particular case that's come up. And I would like to entertain the, uh, the idea is to continue or to reappoint Erica as the 911 coordinator. She gave me an explanation of what's going on with these things. And that's why one of the problems we we're having was having problems. And this is far more complicated than I realized. Is she the same Erica yeah. as I dealt with with Wyndham Regional? Bowman? No, this is Erica Bowman lives up on Meadows, yeah. um, up on no, Man, Mallory. Man, Erica's mixed up. Yeah, this Erica is Rob Wilson's wife. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I have too many Ericas in your life. Three. Oh my God. You should cut now, down. now there's three. You should cut down. On <laughs> so um, we have, is that, do we, need, do, we need, do we have to we vote on all these people? Or I'd like to reappoint Erica Bowman. Do we have a consensus? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, it sounds like an I to me. Yes. Yes, okay, good. I will let her know. I will send the information. I will have the correct <laughs> address. Um, now, we have been blessed with a the, with the very active um, Planning Commission. Um, I have no idea where they get their energy. <laughs> However, they seem to have some source. And they have recently uh, produced some new Act 250 procedures 
for uh, how the town handles Act 250 applications. And um, we should, uh, these were all sent out to you guys uh, electronically. I hope you've had a chance to read them. Um, I have one question, but we, when we get to it, we can get, get to the question. But would you like to speak to this? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll identify or introduce yourself to the camera. Uh, several uh, months ago, the. Uh, yeah, I, several? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I don't know the camera. Sorry, Chris Robbins, I'm a member of the Jamaica Planning Commission. Right, good, good. good. <clears throat> several months ago, the commission appointed me as the Act 250 uh, administrator. And uh, in all naivete, I asked Charlie, uh, you know, what does an Act 250 administrator do? So he told me, and it's a lot. <laughs> uh, so uh, this was kind of a deer in the headlights moment for me, and I guess the rest of the commission. So we decided to write these procedures, both to educate ourselves and uh, to serve as something to hand on to our successors. So the corporate memory wouldn't get lost. Uh, Act 250 was enacted in 1970 when Vermont was undergoing significant development pressure. This was when Interstate 91 was being built and they were worried about development along the highway being out of control. It's a quasi-legal process for review and management of uh, permitting process for significant uh, developments. And it, it's supposed to consider their environmental, their social, and their physical consequences. Uh, there's an accompanying 250, Act 250 program with the objectives to review applications under the statutory criteria, uh, conduct jurisdictional reviews to see whether you need a permit or not, uh, 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 to assist permit applicants and also uh, other parties uh, 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 to the uh, permit uh, that they are uh, supposed to assist in compliance and if you don't comply, uh, perform enforcement. There are 10 criteria for uh, judging the grant, uh, granting of a permit and these briefly are air and water pollution, water supply, impact on water supply, erosion, traffic and transportation, educational services, municipal services, aesthetics, SIBO, scenic and natural beauty, impacts on growth, and most importantly, uh, town and regional uh, plans. <clears throat> Turns out that uh, the uh, regulatory language in our town plan is uh, mandatory to be followed but in the permitting process, so it's, it's quite important. And this, this list is expanded in the appendix A of this document. It, 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 it's quite a bit. Uh, the uh, state is divided into uh, nine districts. We're in District 2, which is Wyndham and part of Windsor County. There is a district coordinator that handles all the administrative details of, uh, of Act 250, including issuing administrative permits. There's an, an uh, environmental commission which holds hearings for more complicated or uh, serious cases. And then, of course, there's an the environmental court that hears appeals. I have handed out tables, and table one goes through the uh, different types of Act 250 uh, proceedings and the possible uh, actions that can be taken both uh, well, what the district coordinator does and what the town's uh, potential actions are. Uh, the first is the uh, project review sheets. Uh, these are uh, lit, these are uh, determination or provisionary determination of the types of permits that are needed for any sort of project, uh, including Act 250, uh, but not exclusively Act 250 uh, permits. And there's nothing to be done about them except they're an important heads up. If, uh, if it is an, uh, a big project or one that we think is going to have a major impact on the town, it's a warning to us to get our act together and be ready for it. Uh, administrative amendments are amendments to existing permits. Uh, uh, no action is required. 
However, if we think there is a significant error in them, or uh, we can uh, file a motion to alter, which would bump it up to one of the more significant reviews. And of course, if we don't like that, we can appeal to the uh, um, environmental court. And, and on appeal, I should say right at the beginning, they usually don't succeed. So unless there's a major error in fact or law, you know, it's not really worth the effort. But I, it's in here for the sake of completeness. Uh, minor reviews are the next type, and these are issued administratively. Uh, a draft permit is issued when the administrator th thinks there are no insurmountable uh, conflicts with the 10 criteria, no widespread uh, public concern. Um, the actions, well, you know, oh, one important thing about these is there's a 20 day time limit to respond. So hence the importance of the, the uh, project review sheets. Uh, we've got it, we can't uh, dawdle there. We can elect to do nothing or we can comment, including ask for uh, more conditions that would be associated with it if, if we think it's necessary, or we can request that the type be bumped up to a major review. <coughs> and then, of course, appeal is uh, one of the actions that we don't like. If we find a problem with what we've done. And then the uh, final one is a major review in which uh, the uh, administrator thinks that there's going to be a significant conflict with one of the 10 criteria or, you know, major public uh, concern. In this case, they hold one or more hearings in the town to discuss it. Uh, and after the hearing, they can issue either a hearing recess uh, memorandum, which if they're going to hold another hearing, or um, a recess memorandum with a deadline to respond by the town. And, uh, uh, and the town can do nothing. We can participate in the hearing. We can issue, we can uh, offer oral testimony. We can provide written comments. Uh, we have to follow the recess memorandum directives, which they'll tell us how to go about it. And uh, if, if we are going to contest something, we should engage all possible resources, which means the select board and the planning commission have to work together to be effective. Uh, we can enlist the aid of the uh, Wyndham Regional Council, state agencies. We probably should hire consultants and attorneys and expert witnesses if, if there's a case to be made, which means we'll have to spend money, mm -hmm. basically. So you'll, you, you must be involved. Uh, there will be a hearing before the Environmental Commission, and if we don't like if we find error, we can appeal, but not liking the result is not really a sound basis for appeal. Uh, the, um, both the Planning Commission and the Select Board are independent statutory parties to any Act 250 proceeding, which means we conceivably both could follow these proceedings, acting independently, not necessarily in a coherent manner. <laughs> and uh, 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 so that brings me to the next table is uh, we're, we're proposing a model of how the uh, Planning Commission and Select Board should work. Uh, Can I ask a good question over here? Yeah. You, know, you just tapped on something. As I read this, I, I was surprised to that the, um, it sounds, as I read the full one, that the Planning Commission and the Select Board have equal, equal um, statute before the Commission. That's right. Yes. Okay. By, by state law and town charter. This is quite explicit. Yeah, I, I read that. I'm thinking that, that sounds a little odd to me because in, in pretty much all other Planning Commission activities, um, the Select Board makes the decisions. You guys make the recommendations. And you're uh, saying that you can go off on your own on this one. Uh, it surprised me too. Uh, uh, we are, although we're equal, you're probably more equal than, than that you can fire us if you don't like what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, careful, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but uh, and also if money is involved, you have to approve it. Well, that's, that was the next part I was going to ask because whichever happens, we the select board has uh, purse strings. Planning commission does not, so I would think that would sort of color how the I can't picture it happening. But as I'm reading this and I understand all the and you know, all the possibilities that are supposed to be considered, that's one of them. That would be uh, tricky. The, well, I I don't know what to say because it kind of surprised me too. It, you really that really is what matter. That is the law. I I I would like to make a comment. It's not going to be a positive comment. Uh, I have been involved in an Act 250. I think I was on the Planning Commission at the time. I discovered, and I think most of us who were involved with the town felt that we were really not heard very much. That the Act 250 group that comes in, they have it in their heads about how things are going to go. We can state our, uh, our opinions, but we really don't have much power at all. Uh, I'll leave that. Now, I don't know if you concur with that. I'm sure you're going to argue against me on that one, but um, that that has been my experience. Oh. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to argue against you. <clears throat> I just want to be recognized. <laughs> Introduce yourself to me. I'm, I'm, right. I'm Charlie Peck. I'm a former member of the Jamaica Planning Commission and served as the uh, town's representative to the Wyndham Regional Commission for quite a few years. Served on the Wyndham Regional Commission's Project Review Committee and have developed a lot of Act 250 testimony for both the Wyndham Regional Commission and the town of Jamaica over the years. I've participated in a number of town of Jamaica um, in, involved with Act 250 proceeding, Act 250 projects in the town of Jamaica and with the Stratton Resort. And I understand what Judy's saying and I understand where she's coming from and that is an, an experience that sometimes happens. But I want to say that it usually happens because the town is not well prepared and does not know how to effectively participate in the process and how to effectively be heard. And I think that the Planning Commission is now on the right track and is doing a good thing in trying to bring, to increase the level of awareness on all the members of the Select Board and all the members of the Planning Commission as to exactly what Act 250 is, how it works, and how the town can best cooperate and coordinate its own efforts so that we can be well prepared when we do have to deal with an Act 250 proceeding and we'll know better how to effectively communicate with the District Environmental Commission and make our point as well as it can possibly be made. But you can't make something out of nothing. And if the town sentiment or the sentiment of citizens in the town is a feeling that this particular project or some aspect of it is very bad or detrimental to the town and we don't want to see it happen and we'd like to argue against it, those arguments are often not effective unless there is clear and effective regulatory language already in the town plan. That's an important part of the whole process is matching the language in the town plan with the result that the town wishes to achieve. It's quite a complex process and I definitely don't want to state that Judy's wrong because I, I think she did have that valid experience and her frustration was real. Um, but I think the cause is mostly a lack of understanding of how the process works and how to effectively say what we want to say in order to be heard as well as we can be. Oh, I hope that I what you're saying is really going to happen. And I think maybe with the activity that's going on at the planning commission level, that may well be what happens. But that was my experience. And, uh, so well, you had a bad experience, and the town has had some bad experiences and some good experiences. We do have some weaknesses, I believe, in our town plan, and I think the planning commission is aware of that, and we'll be trying to correct some of that. Um, I hope I think, that does happen. Yep, the town so has. We do have a voice. We definitely do, and the town has participated effectively in Act 250 proceedings in the past. Um, it's usually been difficult for the select board, much more so than the planning commission, because 
In the past, Act 250 applications with serious problems have suddenly surfaced with apparently they're coming in out of left wheel with no warning whatsoever. The select board is quite unprepared and the planning commission is also at least partially unprepared and really not in a position to be able to help the select board and work together cooperatively. So that's what the planning commission is trying to do now is to formalize a procedure and a process where when this hits you out of the left field and you feel blindsided and you don't know what to do, the document that Chris has presented you will help you and future select boards. To, you'll have something you can fall back on. Oh, don't we have, didn't we write something about that a few years ago? Can't we go look and see this document? Doesn't it say all over it? If you don't know what to do, call Charlie Peck. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, one of the things that I've um, found to be the case with an awful lot of the work I've done with FEMA over the last eight years, and it sounds like, and I may be wrong, I can't remember exactly which particular group this affected us the most of, but is it not true that we get, I think the phrase they use is substantial deference. No, that's not true in Act 250. It doesn't have, what I'm saying was they gave us that pen, uh, because we were prepared, because we had uh, written uh, procedures. And I, I gather that's what this will do for us. Do you say no? No, this, this, will not, this will not change. This may help to improve the town's ability to be well prepared for Act 250 proceedings and to, for the Select Board and the Planning Commission to be able to work better together to implement the town plan. The, the Planning Commission and the Select Board have to work together to develop the town plan and one of the strongest and most effective tools available for implementing the town plan is the Act 250 process, if it's used correctly. And that's what the Planning Commission is aiming at here, but this will not change the way Act 250 works, and the concept of substantial deference, which does apply in certain public utility commission proceedings, among others, and does sometimes apply in certain types of interactions with FEMA, is not related to the Act 250 process. It's different and separate. Well, that's one of the the town does have, town, both the Select Board and the Planning Commission do have full party status with the same legal rights and responsibilities as all the other parties, including the applicant or the owner of the property who's seeking the permit. You're all in there together on equal footing. Gotcha. Thank you. Quick concession, Chris. This, this is more, um, this isn't anything to do with the re-envisioning of Act 250. This is something, no, this is no, kind no, of, no, okay, that's what no, I thought. No, no, um, this is how, this is how it is now. No. And so you've taken, the Planning Commission has taken some steps to simplify these many years of documents into something that can help guide us. No, it was um, many years of no documents. Oh, no, but, but Act 250 has many, many, Act 250 has many years of documents. Yes, that's So you true. boiled this down into, you know, an overview of 10 pages and then also a table just yeah. to help guide us, yes. like you said, you well, know, the, that, so we're not going to be surprised. But. The text in the proceeding is kind of wordy and kind of a slog, I think, and so I put that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Parenthetically, are you the one that compiled this, this legal brief towards the end? <laughs> Oh, no, Charlie did that. I, I, I look at this thing over and I said, where'd you guys find a lawyer? <laughs> I, uh, it was a lot I of work. That from I, I want to state for the record that I'm not an attorney, and I can't give you bona fide legal advice. I have significant paralegal experience and a lot of experience with Act 250. Well, I went through this, and of course, I spent a little bit of my previous life um, in courts, and I'm looking this over and thinking, this looks like it was done by a lawyer to me. So. Even if you were faking it, as long as you're not faking the billing procedure, we're happy. <laughs> Honestly, Paul, I'm really trying very hard not to fake anything. Well, <laughs> play it straight, believe it or not. Yeah, these two. Uh, I was going to go off script for a minute and talk about the importance of the town plan and answer your question, but Charlie said everything I could possibly think of about it. So. Yeah, I think yeah. what happened was that we were totally unprepared. Well, uh, and it, all of a sudden, we're sitting at the table with all of these people from the state. This is an attempt to fix that. <laughs> it looked like a good shot at it, because I was a lot smarter when I got through reading it than when I started. <laughs> the, um, some 
few meetings ago. We came before you and asked uh, if the town wouldn't reconsider its, uh, uh, its approach to zoning regulations. And, and considering it after that, I think, and what I've learned since then, it might be going back and revisiting the land use section of the town plan to make sure that things we think are important are expressed in regulatory language. Uh, would accomplish most of what we had in mind in the first place. Yeah. And, and maybe avoid that was them. a lot of what we ran into that things <coughs> were not in the town plan as our backup. Yeah, well, I, I think we should do that. The magic word, of course, regulatory language. Well, yeah, and that's, as far as I can tell, there's only one regulatory statement in the town plan, and that's. Uh, Bridge line development is prohibited. Everything else is advisory. There are a couple of others, yes, mm -hmm. but but the language is sort of podgepodge, and it would be, the, the town plan would benefit from careful scrutiny. And actually, uh, Chris and the, indirectly the rest of the planning commission is asking to work on that on their behalf, and I am in the process of drafting a report to the planning commission discussing exactly what regulatory language is, what, what is the legal definition, what, what makes language in a town plan regulatory. It is too complex and lengthy a subject to go into in detail here tonight, but I have been studying it for quite a few years and I'm researching it again to prepare a document for the planning commission to help them in their assessment of the town plan and what language in the town plan is and what is not regulatory. Well, it's a very important and complex subject that every member of the planning commission and select board should be well informed on but it's quite reasonable that you're not well the, the work you put into that section here that i just referred to earlier um clarifies your position to the extent that the way we phrase things sounds good while we're sitting around but when you get in front of the regulatory committee it's kindergarten talk yeah it, well that's a good way that's a good informal way to put it i think that's accurate Okay, thank you very Although much. The, the district commissions are, are appointed by the governor and they are regular ordinary citizens. They live among us, they're business people and um, regular folks and, and they don't think or act in a demeaning manner towards towns. They, they're not going to privately or snidely snicker about your kindergarten approach because the process under the legislators that drafted Act, 6, Act 250 more than 50 years ago now understood very well that it's a process that is to be administered by citizens without a lot of detailed legal training for the benefit of other citizens without a lot of detailed legal training. And although there's a, a, lot, a large legal envelope has been built around the process over the years, it isn't as totally indecipherable as one might think when you first try to get, get a grasp on it. Well, it would be good to have a guide to guide us through. Well, the, the critically important thing in this document that Chris has, has brought to you tonight, or sent to you a few, few weeks ago, is a, is a new idea in the town of Jamaica. And that is that if the select board is agreeable, and I, as a citizen, I strongly recommend it, you know, that you should be agreeable to this, because I think it would benefit the board and the planning commission and the town. But if, the plan, if the select board and the planning commission are agreeable to doing it, this lays out a process where the select board, which has separate and equal authority to participate as a party and the planning commission which has separate and equal authority to participate both the board and the commission have a, a clear responsibility to the town to both act responsibly responsibly and wisely and to do their best to implement the provisions of the town plan that we we all feel we have agreed upon so the purpose of this is to set forward a process where the planning commission will bring these issues to your attention as they come forward with as much advance notice as possible. And this is to alert you that the planning commission proposes a formal joint interaction and a strong effort for the board and the commission to reach a combined unified position instead of going off in different directions and potentially canceling out each other's influence. That's new for Jamaica. I think it's very important. I think it would have benefited the town in the past when these situations had come up if we'd had something like this in place. So I, not only did I help to write it, but I'm here to advocate that it's a good idea. We can do that. I think I've probably made my point a couple of times. <laughs> you probably have. 
Yeah. Request right. permission to shut up. <laughs> back yet? We're not back. Um, yes. Chris. So table two just breaks the uh, proposed uh, method of uh, cooperation down for the different types of proceedings. And for the project review uh, sheets, there's nothing really. Uh, uh, I'm supposed to review them and notify you that we received one with an Act 250 requirement if, if it includes one. And uh, there's nothing that needs to be done, but uh, if it's good, we think it's going to be significant, we can start to get our uh, approach together mm -hmm. uh, before the permit's issued. In the case of administrative amendments, normally there's nothing to be done, uh, uh, but uh, it's possible that we can uh, decide uh, what uh, to collaborate on a coordinated response if uh, we think there needs to be a, uh, uh, a motion to alter or appeal for that matter. Or it's possible we could proceed independently if we can't agree. And it's pretty much the same for the minor review. Uh, uh, we, we, the, I, the Planning Commission Administrator will need to inform the select board. Uh, we can do nothing if there's nothing to be done, or we can initiate an action from Table 1 in coordination with you, and we could form a joint working group if necessary, or it could be uh, you could just say, well, okay, keep me informed. And, uh, uh, or you could do nothing or you can proceed independently. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the major review, there's really no way we're not going to act in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, collaborate, I think. Uh, we will have to respond to the memorandum uh, to adjourn or the recess memorandum. Uh, and I can't imagine that we wouldn't want to form a working group to coordinate preparation of uh, testimony and any written sure. input. Uh, although, again, if, if we can't agree on an approach, we can both, by statute, proceed independently. Uh, we, uh, I've, I've submitted this uh, 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 draft to the um, uh, Wyndham Regional uh, Commission, and it's very well reviewed. And in fact, they said they'd like to use it as a model to form a generic version to hand out to the other uh, uh, towns. And uh, they'd also like us to uh, submit it to the district coordinator, Ms. Stephanie Giles is her name, for her comments and invite us to attend a meeting with them to discuss how we can work together on Action 50 matters. So what happened to you doesn't happen to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them, well, yeah, we'll do all that, but I want to hear from my select board whether they'll go for this model of cooperation or not before before we do. So that's what I'm here asking for. That's true. So, well, the other thing I'd say in a sidebar, make sure you get a, a good guess on what they're going to pay you as a retainer. <laughs> <laughs> on page seven, I have two questions. Uh, the, the, the first one is, that, is uh, on the Planning Commission responsibility. It says the District of Iron Mountain Commission will email all project review sheets and notifications of Act 250 permit applications with supporting documentation for developments in Jamaica and surrounding towns that may impact Jamaica due to the chair of the Jamaica Planning Commission, period. Um, it just says it will email them. That, that sentence doesn't say to whom it's going to be emailed. Having said that, the next sentence suggests, um, I'm sorry, it says to the chair of the Jamaica Planning Commission. What's not clear is, to me, I believe what they're doing now is they're emailing it to the town clerk, not to you guys. They email it to Rebecca. Is she getting it as well? Because we're getting a hard copy in the mail. Oh, yeah. I can tell you why, Paul. The reason is that the district coordinator who's responsible for doing this, a woman named Stephanie Dial, mm -hmm. um, is very experienced in her job, and knows what she's doing, and is required to to submit legal service to all the potential parties to any Act 250 proceeding. She knows that both the Town Select Board and the Town Planning Commission are both statutory parties. Okay. So she must deliver copies of all relevant documents to, she must make her best effort anyway, right. to deliver all relevant documents 
to both parties. So the select board is getting copies addressed sent to the town clerk intended for the information of the select board as a party. And the planning commission is getting duplicates okay. sent to, currently sent to the chairperson of the planning commission. I was not aware that it was going to the planning commission. I was aware it was coming to us and, yep. and as near as I could tell from what I saw was under the heading of do nothing. I've got skills and talents in that area so I just used them. But um, this sounded to me like it was uh, not going through the procedures that it was my understanding of already doing. But as long as there's a parallel line, and she's getting it as well, so you're not going to be surprised. So if it hits, it hits uh, the town clerk's desk, um, it's meant for the select board. You guys already have a copy. We don't then, therefore, need to let you know, although it sounds, as we read on, that we ought to be cross-pollinating. Yes. You don't have to cross-pollinate with that, but as soon as you both get to notice, and as soon as you fall decide in your capacity as being responsible for deciding which of these issues needs to be referred to the full board and which it doesn't, I, I hear what you're saying when you say that you're really good at doing nothing, and that is in fact what most towns reasonably and prudently do, because very often doing nothing turns out to be the wisest and best course. But when you suddenly reach the horrifying conclusion that, uh-oh, this doesn't look good, looks like we ought to do something, the big here. question becomes, what? Yeah. And this clarifies, I mean, truthfully, this is a, is a, road, road, a road map to, to that situation. Yeah. Um, oh, the other little thing, I know you're going to hate me. This is actually a compliment. Um, on page 17. For those of you following at home, first paragraph, I apologize up front, but take it as a compliment. Read this whole damn thing, I have one silly little typo. The <laughs> sentence says, thus, if a town plan approves a project, it project can only be denied under, I think the word it is misplaced, misspelled, or misconstrued. A project, it project. Or it, leave the word project out. Some little tiny thing. I think maybe wrong. one of the multiple proofreaders might have slipped up, and I'm probably at least one of the proofreaders that's guilty of that. Thank you I mean, for pointing that, that out. Considering it's, it's, it's the, between Sarah and I, we proof each, proofread each other's stuff so we get tested at least once or twice a week. Um, that's it. Well, I went through this thing, and that's all I could find. I wasn't looking for it, but it came out. Congratulations on the job, Wilma. Any other questions? Does this make sense to you guys? For sure, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of time there. <laughs> There's not anything in the wind, is there? No. Uh, an Act 250? No. <laughs> not that we know of. We will probably, it's likely that there will be, and it's likely that we will not receive a lot of advance notice. When, when there's a very big project, like a major expansion of the Stratton Resort, which I don't anticipate because I think they've about expanded to their economic and other limits, but it, that sort of thing, you're likely to hear about it long in advance. But there are important Act 250 issues that occasionally come up, and you'll have, the town will have very little time uh, with, in which to figure out how best to respond. And this framework is an effort to make that scramble a little bit easier and a little bit better organized. I have to tell you, as somebody who struggled over what they could do with these forms said before in the past, reading this is like, I wish I had this a couple of years ago. So. Paul, well, if you'd like a detailed explanation of why it is that um, the legislature decided to grant equal party status to both the select board and the planning commission, I can give that to you, but I don't want to take up a lot more time at this meeting doing that. I know the attorney who actually drafted the original oh, really? statute. Yeah, I've been involved with and following Act 50 for about 50 years now. And I, I do know the answer, but I just sure, don't want to give it to you tonight because you've got a lot of things to do. You write me, you call me up, you pester me about it, sure. I will tell you the answer. I, I, tr I trust you, but gotcha. Um, all right, so actually, I think what you're asking us to do is to um, to review it and to, uh, do we need to vote to adapt it? I believe we do. Yeah, I think so. I think we want to. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think an expression of consensus that you that the board agrees is in agreement that it wishes to try to reach a coordinated response. The board wishes to work with the planning commission. There have been occasions in Jamaica's historic past, and there have been occasions in other towns 
where for various reasons the select board at certain important times is declined to participate, unable or unwilling to participate or to use its statutory authority. Um, that could happen again, but I think what the Planning Commission is seeking for you to do tonight is just to informally say, we hear what you're saying, we're the, those, the four of you that are in attendance tonight are in agreement that it's a good idea to try hard to work together and reach a unified position, and it's just, you support that concept. Well, couldn't we do that before this? What do you mean before, before this? We could have, if we knew what we were doing. So this, this is just this is just codifying what the best practices are. Before when the paperwork hit me, I'm looking at this, I didn't have a clue of what to do with it. We just kind of tap danced around. Luckily it was one of those do-nothing things which I'm so good at inherently good at. If you, you pick them right, that works. But man, it's it's it awfully annoying when you miss it. This one. Yeah. And then it comes up and bites you. One, it'll bite you. But uh, yeah, so we're not really changing anything, it's just giving us a, a guideline and a, and a uh, plan. This is something, Andy, this is something that I, I envision this as a document that the Planning Commission will hang on to and the Select Board should keep in a file, the town clerk should be aware that it exists. It's something you can look back at. Um, a future board who feels suddenly blindsided by an important Act 250 issue and, oh, we don't know what to do. Well, wait a minute, we've got this procedure that gives us lots of clues about what what to do and how we should do it. Yeah. It gives us clues about who to talk with and who to talk to and how to go about coming up with a unified and rational and workable response. But I think what you're saying maybe it's not a the words. I mean, it's, it's always been this way other than now it's on a two-sheeter mm -hmm. to simplify it for all of us who aren't looking at this every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing new, it's just... Code There's fact. absolutely nothing new yeah. here except a formal effort on coming from the Planning Commission to say, hi, Select Board, we're, we're partners in this. We this, The legislature has thrown us together and given us equal status in a potentially very important situation. Mm -hmm. And the Planning Commission would like to shake hands and announce its intention that it, its statement here is it's very important to the town, to the Planning Commission and the Select Board, for the board and the commission to work together. Mm -hmm. That's the point. At least that's the point as I see it. And so we could as a, as a, just simply offer a, um, a consensus of support without getting into formal motion. If you were so inclined, and agreeable, you could. Well, I've supported the Planning Commission's efforts and all that they've done anyway. That's where I'm, it, I understand that this is something, you know, tangible to look at. It's just not like we might be able to. Figure out. Where, where are you to object to anything here? I would uh, not forward this to Stephanie Giles and not go forward with meeting with the Act 250 and try to rewrite it to accommodate whatever your concerns were. But if you like it, fine. No, I think I understand that, that you're asking us to kind of review it prior to moving it forward. Right. And from what I'm able to gather, we are all pretty much in support of your efforts. Mm -hmm. So, as a select board, we encourage you, we thank you for your efforts, and, and uh, press on, and thank you for playing a few little questions ahead. And thank, I mean, a tremendous amount of effort to take to put this thing together, it's incredible. But once again, you guys have managed to impress the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. It's so Chris's fault. It would not have happened. He's done it again. He's not initiated it. Yeah, he's forced it forward. Sure, but it's not too that's bad that's having a resource like you hanging around in the background. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah that's, that could be a two-headed monster, Paul. It has been in the past, but we're going to say one at a time. All righty, so let's move on to the next item. Um, we have a liquor license renewal application. One of our select board people, I'm going to vote on this one, but I think it's really obvious. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, guys. Unless this is entertaining. You're, you're quite welcome. You probably know, Paul. I know you enjoy it. Of course not. I'm doing my camera twice a week. Yeah, but he's... All right. <laughs>
Well, I, I believe I know you well enough to understand that you know where I'm coming from and you know where I live and you know how to get all of these exactly. questions about IQ50. It's nice to have somebody who has all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a, a liquor license renewal. We have this from the Blue Dot Beverages Look, uh, which is Blue Dot Beverages Look, LLC. Uh, DBA Buellman's Craft and Drafts. Um, there's a uh, check, in fact, it should be two checks, right? Yep, there's two checks. Four. Uh -huh. Yep. And then you got I don't know. That's <laughs> 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 um, Sorry. Yeah. So do we, do we as a select board have any, uh, any uh, issues with accepting and renewing the application? I don't. Hearing none? Where is Blue Dot? Huh? Where, is where did the name Blue Dot come from? Yeah. Well, that, that, I'll tell you where. It's actually a Carl Sagan quote. Uh-oh. It's a what? Carl, Carl Sagan. Sagan quote. And it just oh. came to us when we were forming our partnership. Oh, our, this is yours? This is us. Yeah. Oh. So that's what Earth looks like from oh. distance out in the universe, a small blue dot. So we figured we were just a small blue dot in the whole oh. world of... Oh. Oh. That's really cool. All right, we'll sign it. <laughs> okay, so we, need, we all have to sign it, approve or disapprove. We'll cycle this through with the other things at the end of the session. Uh, all in favor of uh, renewing this, say aye. Aye. Do we have to give a second or a first? Or a second? <laughs> you know? So we yeah, don't have to make a motion. I would, okay. that I would I kind of said accept up. the application for from Blue Dot for a, a liquor license. Brutal. I'll second it, but i got to ask you something. Uh, for the question two, do we have quorum? Without, yes, we have three. Three, yeah. Without Tom? Right, we only yeah. need three. Sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three is a quorum. Yes. Yeah. Out of five. Three out of five. Mm -hmm. So that's all we need. So yeah. if you guys are all voting and positive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, whatever yeah. change our mind, he'd be out of luck. No, he <laughs> not our <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead. When we sign the things tonight, we will sign the things. Okay. All, all those in favor say. All in favor say aye. 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 Any <laughs> hey, opposed? Thank you. <laughs> you didn't know how much work you have to do. You're off. Okay, now we have a question that's a little bit tougher. In fact, um, I'm not exactly sure how to approach it. We have, uh, oh, what's that? I said not I. No, no. Uh, real quick, we have some overweight permits that came in. They were on the, well, since we decided to just Hand them directly to the road commissioner. Boom, right to you. Um, the question for the, on the, on number nine is a sign ordinance administrator. We have a sign ordinance, which it's got some rough spots, but we don't have an administrator. So a lot of the things the ordinance is telling us to do, we don't have somebody to do it. Yeah. So we need to decide what we're going to do. We need, I was hoping to have Tom here since he was. You and Tom worked on this together, as often. Yes. Right? Yep. So that we have a, a consensus of how best to move on this. And our main takeaway, or that, because of, in some situations, the select board acts as the administrator, but the select board also is the judiciary group, so to speak, in this process. So if yes. there is a um, something that does get appealed, it would get appealed to us. So we cannot act but in our own. Yeah. There, there needs to be a you know, a breakdown. Yeah. In theory, the person who's the administrator could recuse himself from that particular procedure if we needed to do it that way, because... Yeah, and I see that, I mean, from having put this together, um, one, we don't have a whole lot of sign requests. I mean, we, maybe in the future we would, but currently we don't. Um, and secondly, it's, it's you're, there's enough of um, opportunity to fall back and ask questions. I mean, most of the time it's very administrative. It's just like, okay, we've received a permit, we've got a $30 check or whatever, it was 25 I think, and okay, it gets recorded and that's fine. It meets all the criteria and it comes then before us to, you know, to, you know if it... Well, I, I, yeah, that was kind of the simple, open I, 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 mean, I think it's simple. But until we got the point. <laughs> Yeah, well, this, uh, we're talking oh, sign, talking aren't we? No. S I G E N. We're talking sign. Yeah. And and we have some problems within the community around sizes of signs and where they're posted, and so uh, it, it 
the person would be the administrator and then bring the difficulties to us. Is that correct? Is that how you're seeing it? That's, that's how, well, the way it's designed, the administrator would take, first of all, it's got to design a form because it says the select board will produce a form and we haven't done that. Then that will be uh, pursued with the site administrator and that he would then meet with the, with the petitioner right. and work out the details. Right. Well, now we have people who have signed up that um, we're getting some feedback back from. Mm -hmm. We don't have an administrator who can return that. We have to bring him here. And then the question, as I'm reviewing it, how does this person know what the ordinance says? Uh, how does he even know that they're supposed to be uh, chase the ordinance down? I mean, there's lots of pieces missing here. Um, yeah. So this person meaning the sign administrator, or this person meaning somebody the seeking a sign? Seeking, someone seeking a sign. Yeah. And so, as I was going over this, and I, I heard the, the issue of the complaint, and I'm looking this over, and I'm thinking, I don't know where to go with this. Well, there has no always, idea what the complaint is. And there's always been a signed ordinance that someone, whether it was antiquated or not, there's always been a process that somebody has to go through within the town. I'm gathering you to put up a sign. That very much. I mean, I was aware of it. I put up a sign. I came before yeah, the board, and yeah, was, yeah. I, mean, and I think most people. And there's, yeah. I mean, we can't we can't act or design something to appease somebody's lack of knowledge of ordinances. I mean, I think yeah. the board has always been the sign uh, ordinance person. Right. And and so what. What you're asking now is, do we want one person to be the first line of activity well, and then issues brought to us as the final arbitrator? Yes, in a, in a sense, that's the way it's been sort of fleshed out. But the section says, there is hereby created the office known as sign administrator. Such officer shall be appointed by and serve the pleasure of the select board. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have any. No, we, well, do we have anybody who is interested in that? Well, Tom said he was, but because of his working situation, it doesn't make sense for him. Right. He's out of town. He's what, an hour and a half. It's another, another unpaid, potentially time consuming yes. um, administrator that would be laying on the slack board. What, I mean, it's on the I agree with him. It's already on the select board, right? right. Yeah. 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 So so should, be the judge somebody should come in time, so and see Sarah and ask what they gotta do to get a sign. And then why doesn't the select board approve it? Or well let's say the board. select board denies it and then this person <laughs> says, Well, I feel that this so, shouldn't be denied. Where do they go? Well, they they well, well, part of it is if he comes in tomorrow morning, he's gotta wait two weeks for an answer. Mm -hmm. Because the select board meets every two weeks. Well, and then we so out roads. <laughs> well, we're trying to be reasonable. But then we go through this and, and explain to this individual, here's all the rules about this, and this is what you have to follow, and you gotta give us 50 bucks or whatever it was, and, and go through those processes. That shouldn't be tasked on the town clerk, except she can certainly hand a copy of it. No, I, didn't, I wasn't saying yeah. it shouldn't. But she's gonna be the first one they contact. Because they'll come in and say, hi, Sarah, I want to sign. And she's gonna say, call Paul. <laughs> or say, here's the application. If right. we have an application, which, right. which was easy enough to do, yeah. I mean, we, should, yeah. we can do that. I can do that. You can do an application. Yeah. So we'll have Sarah make up an application, and then there is a... Um, do we in fact have a person, or are we look, we're just looking at the scenario? I think, but then as a select board, we... we if, well, if, this calls for a person. Okay, but we need do we have somebody control. asking, to uh, making a complaint? Yes. Oh, okay. I think yes. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, okay. we've been laid dormant for a while yeah. because things are pretty quiet. Right. Suddenly they're not quiet anymore. And so Tom and I, I was hoping, he, I didn't realize he was going to be here, but I was hoping he could make the presentation, but um, because I'm getting it second or third hand, so I hope there's somebody who's got the direct information. But the point is that a question has come up. Um, it's a legitimate question. I've re reviewed it. They make some good points. Mm -hmm. um, whoever is making the complaint must have read this. Mm -hmm. to know where to complain. And it's like, uh oh, where do we go from there? So now this, in theory, this person should come before the board to say if this complaint is legitimate and we say yes or no. Exactly. We, I prefer that having just, you know, I get 
there's something going on, I was hoping Thomas would be able to be here to make that information. I don't know the information. So well, we should wait until Thomas is presented. I think there are two issues here, though. I mean, we should talk about having the slime, slime administrator, and then once our process is there, hand this person the application, and, and, and if they if it doesn't meet the criteria, then they come before the board to say, mm -hmm. I was disapproved for my sign, and I believe there's some ambiguity in the process, and then we sure. vote on and I, and I think as long as we're all, we as a board are understanding that this isn't just dormant anymore, that it's actually right. boiling to the top. Yeah. We pay attention to that, and then when Tom's back online, we can all get together and decide, because he's got the information. I don't have the information. Yeah, I think that should be presented separately. Yeah. So this ordinance has, we voted on that, it is actually a working document yes. as it stands right now. Yes. And is there anybody out there who is, that we think might be a good uh, ordinance person? Yeah, an ordinance. administrator? Yeah, administrator. How, how do we go about getting an administrator? There we go. We can advertise, we can go knock on doors. Mm -hmm. You know, we can add a little flyer to our Christmas card list. We can put it on the constable. We can put it on the constable, which I don't think is... Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, uh, we can always ask... Sorry, it. Rob. <laughs> I, think it, I think it will come down to a personal appeal. We, yeah. Every one of us, I mean, we've put it out on the meetings and yeah. we've talked about it, but I think it's going to come down to, hey, Joe, are you interested? Yeah. We'd really like to have you solved. Yeah. Somebody who's interested. And they say yes or no. I mean, well, and there. there are plenty of people in this town who are smart enough to do the job. And the, the question is, do they have the time yeah. and the energy? And we certainly support anybody who's interested in doing it, but it, it probably need to have one person be the point person yeah, I, to bring it back up because we get into the business of, of well, as you said, the quasi judiciary stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. which is tricky. Okay, so this question I put on here because I want to discuss it one and so we've discussed it. Um, I like the idea of, of, of putting this on the table until Tom comes back and making a decision. In the meantime, we are actively soliciting for people who like to do this. How, and how will, will we go about doing that? Solicit? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that we want to advertise it. We can, we can put a note on a bullet board. Yeah. We don't have a. We don't really have an instrument that. Um, uh, how about on our uh, website? Can we put it on the website? Mm -hmm. We can put it on the website. Okay. okay. We can tell Karen across the street. She's got yeah. uh, an avenue. And I'd be happy to work with Sarah, and just as being part of the process of putting that ordinance together to come up with an application that's simplified. Okay. That's a, you know. That would be good because you were in the meetings yeah. putting it together, so yeah. that would help. Yeah. That would yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think it sounds like we've got a plan to like find an administrator. So anyway, so that's that was the thing that has boiled up. Um, Let's, let's, at least we're on, 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 on the page. Okay. Okay. Um, one other thing, and not to me, uh, it's not on the, on the, um, on the list that I came in afterwards when I was putting the paperwork together. We have some minutes from Tuesday, March 19th, emergency select board meeting. And they basically say, you know, who was there? Uh, Judy moved the matter should go to an executive session. They seconded it. We entered an executive session. Judy made a motion to exit. Judy made moved to adjourn. That's pretty much medicine. We can't keep track of what's going on in it anyway. I would like to have a motion to accept these minutes as presented. I move that we accept these minutes of the emergency meeting. A second. Second. Do I have any further discussion? If none, they are approved. And no. Accept. You got a vote on it. Okay. <laughs> I can't vote. You can't vote. I wasn't there. Right. Oh, all right. So I can. all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay, so that's three. We thought it was a good thing. We thought it was going to be easy sitting there. Right, so Last item. Public concerns. I have a, I have a note from um, uh, from Bonnie West. It's um, she would like me to mention to everyone that there is a penny sale at Leland Gray. Doors open at 5.30, starts at 6.30, April the 6th. It's a 1550 raffle, food sales, and all this is benefiting the Jamaica Village School. So those of you who are, uh, have a lot of extra pennies lying around, uh, the school can use the help. That's always a fun night, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's always kind of fun. It's food and yeah. stuff and right. all kinds of strange things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's 
all I have. Um, do I have a motion for adjourning? I'd just like to say as the something about the roads. Oh yeah. That, oh good idea. You know, if you live here full time, it's mud season. It's a revelation. Um, <laughs> yeah. But this this year I think that they are gonna get worse before they get better because we have such a deep frost and it's starting to come Mars up slow. Been. Yeah. But I don't think if I had to guess and, and talking to Keith that the worst is yet to come. Oh, really? I think so. I think actually uh, on our road, it's been about two weeks going. Oh, okay. and, uh, and in fact, riding home today, there are patches that are bad, but it is starting to solid up. Well, it's, uh, uh, it's awful. It was yeah. an early yeah. frost. And it, 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 has, it has been for us on Turkey Mountain the worst in 35 years. Right. And we're not the yeah. only town. The, oh, the entire state. If you watch the local TV, it's, it's all over the state. Yeah. But just watching my driveway uh, freeze up and thaw out yeah. week after week lately, yeah. exactly. I can't imagine that some of the roads are really going to be tough. So yeah, really the, the road crew is doing the best they can. Yeah. If your road is impassable or you have some problem, call the town office or call the garage. And they'll come up if they have an RA. Some of it's going to be, it's just going to be muddy, but if it's impassable, then they can do what they can. Yeah, actually, they even uh, the other day scraped it. Mm -hmm. They had it's the, uh, the big, uh, what's grader. the grader out. And it was like, wow, I've never seen this done before where they literally scraped yeah, the road. They usually have to wait dries out enough, yeah. so that's kind of strange. Yeah, he said to me this morning that he thought that they're hoping by the next week or so they can start scraping the roads. Yeah. But it depends on the weather. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a good weather forecast. Yes. For the yeah. It has been an adventure. Yes. <laughs> it's it's, it's a charm. Part of the charm. Um, any further discussion? Hearing mm -hmm. all in favor of the motion to adjourn? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very done. We're sitting adjourned at 8.27.